I feel like someone should stop me. If you've ever been stuck in the lab late on a Friday night, you know there's one tool you have to have to get you through to the weekend. I've been there, and when it gets late and the pressure's on, no other tool will do. That's right, you gotta stay hydrated. And the actual location of the Balmer Peak on the BAC to Bugs Fix chart is a subject of much controversy and a few people even deny its existence. That's why I was so concerned when I saw our frenemies at Fluke launch a new handheld tool recently. Frankly, I'm shook and I'm a little worried that our Keysight offering won't hold up competitively. And we don't take that lightly. Also, I love my Keysight bottle opener because it works so well. And if there's a better option out there, I'll use that instead. At first I thought it was all a big joke with their tongue-in-cheek description of it as a professional refreshment tool, but there's a price and an ordering button so I had to pick one up myself. I just couldn't stop myself. Weirdest expense report ever. And it showed up. So the question is, which one is better? The Keysight or the Fluke? Let's find out. Keysight wins for hanging storage, but storage doesn't matter if it doesn't open bottles well. Normally I'd rope in my coworkers to test it out, but since we're quarantined, we have to get creative. Fortunately, I'm quarantined with a few certified bottle experts who have taken to the bottle since before they could walk. <laughs> yeah. Which one is cooler? Cooler. Which one's the coolest? This is cool. This one's the coolest? Yes, I favorite. Yeah. It. It's your favorite? Yeah, my red. What do you think about this one? I like this one. <laughs> you like that one? Okay. Can you open it? Oh! <laughs> oh you want to try it? How much do you think? Yeah, they're different. It's lavender. Lavender. Yeah, it's like a soda. Like a soda. I know lavender can be soda. Yeah, I know. I didn't know that either. It's pretty delicious though. I'm at first, I'm gonna drink this. You're gonna drink it? Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your help. Yes. Is this with dinner? Well, it looks like Fluke wins the princess test too, but I'll have to take that one with a grain of salt. I think I'll have to be the judge and jury for this matchup. After testing to the rigorous standards a project like this requires, I have to admit, I like the Fluke bottle opener a bit better. We're, we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board on this one and figure this out. It's really bugging me. I know I can't sleep at night knowing Fluke is winning the showdown, and our Keysight R&D teams work tirelessly to make sure we have the best tools commercially available. I have an idea to fix this competitive gap that just might work. I think we could turn an oscilloscope into the ultimate bottle opener. Let's give it a shot. I don't want to jump right into chopping up and doing a hack job on a pristine scope because we have to keep this project classy. Fortunately, I was able to get a hold of some scrap cases and we can experiment with mounting hardware, cutting tools and bottle angles. I also only have intermittent access to our usual studio workshop, so I'm gonna bounce between there and here, which is my basement, as access allows. I've never worked with this plastic, which is an ABS blend, so it's gonna take some tinkering. I talked to one of our mechanical engineers, and he recommended just dropping in some screws that are made for plastic. I'm not sure that's gonna be strong enough. The first thing we have to figure out is placement. Everyone wants a bottle opener on their scope, no one wants their boss to know there's a bottle opener on their scope. So the obvious spot is on the back and this will be an easy spot to check material strength. I found these cases in the basement. R&D was getting rid of them after doing whatever they do with old cases. And this is actually an accurate representation of me finding them. And I would much rather mess these up than mess up my actual scope. So we're gonna do some trials, see what sort of structural integrity we get on these, figure out where we wanna put it, and then we'll do the final build on the scope itself. 
So the bottle openers we got came with some drywall screws, but obviously that's not gonna be helpful here. So let's start with just some plastic screws. This is what R&D recommended. We'll see how it works out. So our hardware store screws worked really well. It seems a lot more solid than I thought it would. First I'm gonna test it with a screw screw First I'm gonna test it with a screwdriver and then we'll actually give it a go on the scope itself and see how it holds up just sitting on the back like that. I half expect it to just pop out. We'll see what happens. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this, is, this is really well. This uh, oh I think I'm bending the bottle opener, so. It's a little disappointing, actually. I was expecting to have to drill into the metal and use machine screws and all that. Um, we're still gonna drill into the metal and use machine screws and all that. Look at this gap here, it did bend. I think the moral of the story is to always trust R&D. And it does look like the bottle opener stressed the plastic a little bit. You can see some of the marks there. This probably is not gonna hold up to everyday industrial grade use, so we're definitely gonna go into the sheet metal. So I don't wanna go in the back where we put our other one because we have our power supply here, but over here is a ton of space. And I like this spot because if you look at the back, this is kind of a stealth spot because nothing says I work really hard all the time like having a bottle opener attached to your scope. I feel like someone should stop me. That went way better than I thought it would. <laughs> so I think I could maybe on the real one just file a slot for this. I think we're gonna like this angle a little bit better. And the bottom screw doesn't actually provide a ton of structural integrity. It really just pushes in against the plastic there. And I think the plastic can take that. Our test subject didn't survive surgery, but that's what it was for. We have our other one, so you didn't die in vain, noble dumpster bucket. However, let's now take a shot Everybody! at the final build. I should also mention it is a bad, bad, bad idea to do this to your test gear. You shouldn't try it, you'll void your warranty. You'll have to explain to people that you toasted your scope making a scope for toasts, or you'll slice yourself on sheet metal. Come on. Mm. Ow. Ooh. Got myself. Darn you, sheet metal. I'm gonna have to bandage that. So we can use our test bucket to figure out exactly where we need to cut. We only need to make two cuts. One in top so we can hold the nut in place, and then one in the side back here so we can slide the bottle opener in. And we already put a hole in the sheet metal during our testing because we were pretty certain we wanted a screw there. For this hole, all we have to do is make it big enough for our screwdriver to fit in and hold the nut. Here's what it looks like on the inside. So we'll want to use a deburring tool to get rid of some of those rough edges. So with these two cuts, our bottle opener fits really well right inside there, and you can't even see it in the profile, which is nice. The other thing that these handhelds don't do is catch the cap once they come off. They were falling everywhere when we opened it. So I pulled out a magnet from my garage, and I think there's gonna be some space right in back, and hopefully through the case, it'll catch our caps. This magnet looks like it was made for this. And what can go wrong with attaching a magnet to an electromagnetically sensitive device? Mm. It's outside the shielding, it shouldn't be too bad. Any company can make a tool, but it's these little touches that really make them stand out. And now it's time to put it all back together and get the final screws in. Okay. Where's my handle? 
and just boom. Ta da! Forgot the power button. No! God! No! God! Now the trick is to remember to glue the nut to the sheet metal before you assemble the scope because that's the only time you can do it. <sighs> okay, it's go time. Fortunately, I just ordered a couple PCB panels like a week ago, and I had extra space in the panel, so I made these little three-quarter inch Keysight branded uh, on Oshpark After Dark PCBs, and that's gonna fit really well right over this hole. After a minor snafu in which there was a disconnected cable all the way inside the scope. Well, that's not good. It is now up and running and assembled. So there's only one thing left to do. Ah. Hmm. No, I'm just kidding. It's late but boy, do I need to unwind a little bit after this video, and I have just the thing. Okay, it's finally time to give it a go. I have not tried it yet. We're gonna try it for the first time on camera. I think this is the first time a bottle will have ever been opened on an oscilloscope. I, I'm gonna take a guess here. All right, this, it's a beautiful thing. I've had five great moments in my life now. I've had my wedding day, the birth of my children, starting work for my current boss, and this moment right now. I won't rank them or I'll get in trouble though. Anyways, it's time to start working on the next video after a bit of sleep. We have a couple coming up that you won't want to miss, so make sure to subscribe to this channel and check us out over on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff, thanks for watching. Let us know if you've seen any other more ridiculous hacks than this. Put it in the comments and I will see you next time. Did the magnet work? I don't even... Ah, uh, yes! Oh. Worth every hour of lost sleep.